If you're working in Inventor between parts and drawings, it's very, uh, it's a very good idea to be able to document as much as possible from information that you really have. So in this video, what we're going to take a look at is I want to document how many holes are actually present on in, in this part over here. Uh, but what I want to do is I want it to be as a visual representation on the drawing. And whenever I change the number of holes, it must change the, the text that reads off there. So we can either do normal text or we can do uh, sort of leader text. And what I'm doing is leader text over here. So I'm going to say on this component over here, I want to have some text. I can have uh, leader lines, right click, continue. And in the server here, I want to, you know, you can set up your, your font and how high your font is, your, your text height. Bold, italic, underscore, strike, under, um, strike through. So where I want to get this information from, if you didn't know this, you can go and grab information from other parts of Inventor. So for instance, you know, the, the model parameters, I can grab model parameter values. I can grab user parameter values, standard eye properties values from both the drawing and the part as well. Um, your drawing properties, sheet properties. Piping styles for, for all your, your tube and pipe. Physical properties from the model as well as your sheet metal properties. Today, what we're going to take a look at is just my, my parameters from the model. So I'm going to select that. And then if it was a an assembly, it will give me um, all the different parts that I had over here. Okay, so we've just got the wheel. And then we're going to take a look at what parameters are present in the wheel. Now, you'll see that D0, D1, 19, 2. And, you know, if you, you know, it, it kind of looks very confusing. And so what I've done is I've actually gone and renamed one of the parameters holes, which is what I'm looking at. So I select holes over there, and you'll notice there it says 6.000 UL, and the position in three. I don't want to see those, those trading zeros. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say zero, okay, precision, and then I select this add. So now what you'll see, you'll see the, the number six added there, and it's going to be highlighted. So tell me that it's a parameter that I'm getting from somewhere else. And I'm going to just say holes. Okay. So that's going to be my static tester, text that I've got. So now what happens is I've got six holes over there. So let's go back to the, the, the model and see what happens when we change. So if I right click on it, click on open, it'll open up the model over here. Okay. And just to show you, if you didn't know how, if I go up to my parameters at the top over here, you'll notice there that I've actually changed that to holes, the name of the model parameter. That was D, I think D20 or D21. And uh, just with this, you know, holes, you know, it's going to underscore um, if you wanted to do a whole sentence, but I'm just going to keep it at holes over here. Okay. So when I do go to my circular pattern, right click edit feature, and let's say, let's make it eight. Okay, so it changes the amount of holes over there. Now go back to my, my drawing file, and you'll notice there it's updated the drawing, and it's also updated that eight over there. And like I said, this is not just, you know, sort of, um, confined to to parameters let's go take a look at uh, adding another leader text and putting down maybe the material so we want to know what the material is so parameters let's go standard eye properties so now here you can either do the eye properties of the wheel or the um, sorry the part or the idw and i can see appearance let's go through to material select ok so stainless steel. Let's go back to the part, open, and go and change it to, let's do thermoplastic resin. Back to my wheel, and it updates to thermoplastic resin. So there you can see once again how easy it is to be able to get information that you really put up front while beginning your design, and then bring it into your 2D drawing environment so that whoever does get this knows exactly what's going on. And if any changes are made, at least then update um, all the way down to this 2D drawing over here. Thanks very much for watching.